are in defining your evangelistic target. So how do you do this? Well, number one, you need to ask how many people live uh, in your area. You define your target geographically. And I'd encourage you to determine where is our church going to meet, and then draw a circle uh, of uh, one, three, five miles. It says miles here. You can do kilometers. It works the same. But you identify uh, rings of distance away from your church. I'd encourage you to think how many people live within walking distance of the church, how many people live within taxi distance of the church, how many people live on bus routes and can come to our church or on a metro. Or you know, Look at how people will come and determine how many people live within uh, those ranges. And then you figure out the, the number of people uh, there, the average trip time, and then uh, in America, you can figure that 50% of them don't go to church. Your numbers may be very higher than that. Uh, or you may be in an area where there are lots and lots of Christians. Okay? But you want to understand, what, what are we reaching and how many of them are not connected with the church? And that identifies your target geographically. That's your fishing pond. That's the area that you're going to try and fish in. Number two... You want to ask, what kind of people live in our area? This is my pond. What kind of fish are in it? And so you define your target demographically. And you ask yourself, what's the age breakdown here? You know, how many in each, each age group? Is this mostly middle age or is it mostly college age students? Is it mostly older people? Uh, are most of the people that live in our area children because there are lots of young families? You want to identify what's the age breakdown. Uh, you want to look at what the marital breakdown is. How many uh, people are single? How many people are married? Because the way you reach married people is different than the way you reach single people. Uh, you want to look at the income breakdown. What do they earn? Now, in, in almost any neighborhood, certainly in my, uh, my area, you've got a wide range of people and how much they make. We've got poor people in, in, within the sphere of influence of my church, and we have wealthy people and everybody in between. But also in neighborhoods, you can identify what, what is the percentage, what's the, the majority, and, and identify who are the people that you're going to, to try and reach. And then you look at occupational breakdown. Where do they work? Are they blue collar? Are they white collar? Are they laborers? Are they professionals? Are they stay-at-home moms? You know, what, what, what's the primary occupation of the people that live in your area? Now, you can find this information, uh, usually your government uh, census, uh, the local library, uh, your, um, uh, we call them counties and cities, have a lot of demographic information on your local area, newspaper offices, uh, you know, realtor groups. Uh, you, you can dig a little bit and find... A, pretty significantly researched information about your community and about the breakdown. That's one of the wonders of our age. You can do some little Google searches in your area and start coming up with some of the demographic uh, information. Uh, a, another way to do that is just to go outside and look around. You know, just go out and pay attention to, to what you see and, and who's here and, and, and have eyes to see, uh, you know, all the different levels, all the different groups, and, uh, and pay attention to your area. Uh, number three, you want to ask, what are their values, their interests, and their fears? And this is how you define your target culturally. Uh, you want to know, what, what are they interested in? What are their hobbies? What are they afraid of? Uh, what do they value? And, uh, and you can tell that just by kind of, again, looking around in the community. What are the activities that are people, people are involved in? And uh, what uh, kind of shops are there? What kind of uh, workplaces are there? That'll identify uh, uh, kind of the, the uh, cultural uh, standing of your, of your community. But really, the, the best source for this is if you can uh, do a personal uh, community survey. If you can just get out and talk to people. And I'd encourage you, as you do that, Pastor, don't make this... Uh, a, a, a witnessing opportunity. Don't make this where you are going door to door to share the gospel. Make this an opportunity where you're going door to door to glean information. Uh, for one thing, it, it takes a lot of the um, uh, negativity or, or resistance to it from other people. You're just having conversations. You're just getting to know the people in your neighborhood. You're just finding out for them 
uh, who they are and where they work and what, what are they interested in, what do they do for um, uh, recreation, what do they do uh, to entertain themselves, what are their fears, what are their needs. And so you want to uh, just try and pay attention within your community. And then you want to try and determine what do they know about the gospel. And this is how you target your uh, 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 area, you target your community uh, spiritually. And so you determine their, their religious background. Uh, you know, is it, is it Muslim? Is it Hindu? Is it atheist? Is it, uh, you know, Buddhist? Is it, um, you know, whatever? Or is it Christian? What, you know, is there a heavy Catholic influence there? Or, you know, what, what is, the, uh, is the, re- the religious background? And the truth is, all unbelievers are not alike. Uh, unbelievers are very, very different. And so we want to spend the time, put forth the energy to try and identify, well, who are the people that, that uh, we're going to reach in our neighborhood? 